Tech problem here. Yeah, it went past. Let's have a look at it. Okay, that's the cord. Um, yeah, nothing that one can visually see that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, actually, from a visual perspective, in perfectly good shape. So, anyway, um, what happened was that um, it um, suddenly one day it just. Um, yeah, the, uh, the network disappeared on the computer, and I said, oh, well, whatever, I just reboot the computer, and then um, uh, the card now locks up in the very early boot sequence, not, uh, even before the operating system, so it's the BIOS phase of the boot, so then it, it kind of locks up, and then it kind of like hangs around, you can wait for minutes on end. and then suddenly it'll free up, and then it'll boot, boot Windows 11, and then... Um, Windows 11 will just show that it didn't load the drivers and, and there's no evidence of any life in the card. So anyway, um, it's been living a thermally not so great, not so great life. It uh, could have had more cooling on it, so it's been actually <laughs> working for quite uh, many months and through the um, our summer, which uh, okay, it's not mega super hot, but in the in the area where it sits, uh, the, the thermals can get um, yeah, 30 Celsius, and then in the box probably 35. Ah, not 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 really good. So okay, we can we can probably give it a pop. Plus, it will it is um, all these cards that I have they're used cards, so purchased as pre-on, so um, maybe it didn't have that much life in it. But anyway, now we have to try and. Um, come up with a solution to um, replace it. So I actually did have another one and I just to keep it separated from the other one and uh, I don't find purpose I keep it in its plastic box and um, now um, this card when I tried to install it um, it um, first complain about the firmware being too old so the firmware was too old for the um, drivers and then I went through a successful procedure of upgrading the firmware on the card and um, then it um, it goes through the BIOS booting sequence and then it goes into Windows and then Windows will not recognize that it won't load the drivers for it so um, now this specific card was the one that I tried to get to work on my um, Ubuntu server and it didn't work there either. So the issue is that did this card always have an issue from the very beginning. And as I said it's always a risk of a mobile use card and, and plus this thing is when you yeah I mean you can upgrade the firmware and the firmware um, system went through without complaining but I mean uh, whether there is a, some small dependency between the firmware version and the hardware version you have on the card is always, always a little bit of an unknown. Um, but anyway, this 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 one didn't turn out to be working. So um, yeah, so what I have, <laughs> I I actually went and bought a couple of extra ones. So, um, but what I thought I'd do is that I've already done the procedures so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the process of how I succeeded in upgrading the firmware here because I wasn't actually going to put it in a video but then I thought maybe somebody else would like to actually up, uh, upgrade the firmware on one of these cards and I mean I actually did successfully do it so I'll, I will go through generally how I did it and the information uh, sources and then I'll put them a little bit more detailed description in the um, video com uh, comment, so you can actually, yeah, for more of the details, you can actually read it there. So let's get started. So I'm going to go through a few web pages first. I'll put the links in the in the comments of the video. But this is the first um, uh, link, and this is the link to the um, quick specs for the card itself. And as you see, it's retired and you know, shouldn't be used anymore. Um, you you, you kind of get a 
and and this also contains like information about the you know, different adapters and then the modules and all that kind of stuff so you might find it interesting oh, and the other page that's of interest is the um, page where it actually talks about the last known um, drivers so you can actually check what what operating systems it did in the past support and then what driver version was available and also it does mention if you go into the details it does um, mention the um, the uh, firmware version also uh, I know most of this stuff is uh, a little bit out of date but, but still it kind of gives you something to go on here we actually have a firmware section and it has different utilities to upgrade the firmware with so we're going to be looking at one of the solutions for that and the thing is that we want something that's generic we, because the operating systems are pretty out of date here so we don't have that operating system we're kind of messed up so I'm going to try and go for a generic solution so the final page of interest is actually um, where you can actually get this HP Logic uh, P33 flashed update kit, which is um, software on the CD ROM. And this is going to be now the basis for the upgrade procedure that I um, used. So let's get into it. I think it's actually easier just to go through the instruction. Actually, I thought I'd make a short version, but it's probably easier just to follow my instruction that I used. Um, so the problem is that you, when you get this upgrade kit, it actually has a firmware. I mean, if you're doing the what I'm doing, to want to have a firmware version which is compatible with the um, the driver I got to work on Windows 11, then it's, it won't work with the firmware that's on the um, CD. So what we need to do is we need to um, actually upgrade that. So you download the ISO uh, and then you get the um, server 2008 firmware. I mean the reason to get that is that it's not for 2008 server, it's because it's the, the firmware, the correct version of the firmware you want to put on the card if, if you're running my configuration, it's Windows 11. So what we do is we create a USB boot st uh, um, stick from this ISO and you can use Rufus here, I put the link to to the software tool where you can actually create the, um, the bootable USB. Uh, I just had a, a bit of a strange thing that the, in Ubuntu I, could, I can't open the ISO file. Uh, but when I created the USB stick, then I could access all the files on the USB stick, so it wasn't an issue. Uh, and then uh, just to mention about the driver version that I want to have. And then you, you need to have a look at what driver version you want to use uh, for your configuration. And then we extract all the files from the, um, the package for 2008. And then we borrow the binary file, which is the um, firmware that we want to use. And then we just copy that to the USB stick into here and we take away the existing um, uh, file that's there and then of course this this works for any so you can actually choose whatever bin file you want to have as long as it's of course the firmware for this card uh, and that's the only thing you need to do because the the scripts and stuff if you if you dig into the scripts and stuff on the on the USB then um, actually show you the layout of the USB drive then you'll find you'll see that it's it's generic I will go into all the files and details but you here you can see the um, root menu um, of the um, of the bootable USB drive so basically it boots itself into um, uh, yeah ISO Linux and then here we have the um, the actual bin file and then it has to flash utility and then some readmes and stuff and then it, uh, everything is just run from bats so that's um you know, pretty uh, pretty pretty generic usb boot stick 
um, with just the, the it automatically runs these bad files and um, to install the firmware. So and you just put the card in the machine you want to upgrade it on and then you boot it up with the USB stick. I took the fiber modules um, out of it before I updated it. I don't know if that has any um, any like a technical impact, but I, I didn't have any fiber modules on it. Uh, and then you might actually have to do a, a put the USB drive as a priority boot, and, and then you might need to activate legacy boot mode on your BIOS to be able to uh, so that it will boot the specific USB key. And then um, and then. Um, and when it boots, then the great thing is that it'll tell you what adapters you have installed, what's the current flash image version, and then what's the um, uh, firmware version. And then it gives you the bin information also. And then you just say yes to install it, and then it does the firmware update, and then it will tell you if it succeeded or not, and then it will request you to reboot the, reboot the machine on it. And, um, uh, on the card that actually ended up not working, I have no, I have no evidence that the firmware update failed in any way. It it went perfect. It went through. So usually when you have firmware update utilities, they 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 put the firmware on the card and then they also back read it to make sure that it's um, valid. So so I I don't doubt that it actually succeeded in doing the firmware update. So that's why I gave, gave this presentation here and we'll post the information so that if somebody won't stop it there. The firmware on the card, then at least they have, they know, they can um, do it. Because I don't think this is the issue why the card's not working. <laughs> I think it's uh, there's something else that's got screwed up with it. So next phase for me is I'm going to take, uh, not this card because this is the one that's broken, but the and the, <laughs> the the new card, <laughs> and I'm going to. Um, the one that I've never tested before. I'm going to put that in my. Uh, actually, in this machine, the one that I'm recording on, and uh, see if it um, wakes up. I really have this computer in such a crappy place. It's teetering on the end of the, end of the table here. So uh, let's hope it doesn't come crashing down when I try and boot it. So now I do not have any. Um, optical adapters or modules plugged in SFPs plugged in so but it um, actually seems to load the drivers so that's a very good very good sign so let's see what happens when I try and put a module in so that's the module in ah, I didn't expect it there's no lights or anything so um, I actually didn't expect there to be, so now I'm going to go and plug in the fiber and see what happens. I have to film upside down and fix the native. <laughs> see? Blinky blinky! Now I'm going to um, take out this network cable, which is I've been running gigabit ethernet standard. I'm just going to unplug that and see if, see if I still have networking. So, um... Of course, this is not very informative because it, it just enumerates the Ethernet adapters. But uh, Ethernet three is the um, the one that's my standard Ethernet, and that I pulled the cable out. So then it says media disconnected. So that must be that one. And um, then this is just default switch. And then I think this is probably the one, the one that's at the bottom. It's a bit hard to see. There's so many other discs. But anyway, this is the um, Ethernet 2 is the one that's going through the fiber. And I actually tested the internet, and um, now I have 10 gigabit connectivity again. Hooray! So, ah, you must be wondering why am I messing with these cards, but <laughs> they, they are dirt cheap. <laughs> I know that the SFP modules they they work with the fiber that I have uh, without a hitch, and uh, and in all fairness that did work very well. So um, it was of course a bit sad that it turned out that that adapter I tried to get to work on um, 
in the Ubuntu installation on the server was clearly bro also broken. Oh, and it not also broken, that, that it was broken. So, so that one was broken. I mean, the, 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 the reason the poor PC, the original PC adapter died is I'm pretty much quite confident because <laughs> the thermal environment, it should have a, like, in a server environment, it has all uh, huge server fans, you know, the ones that make like 10,000 RPM and make so much, you know, make jet engine sounds and they're blowing air right across the court, like volumes of air. And that, that, the PC, I have a PC fan on it, but, um, uh, in the summer conditions we have here, you'll have like 30 degree amb ambient temperature, ambient air throwing out of the but it, I mean, it has survived. It, it isn't that it hasn't only worked for a few weeks or something. It's, it, it's been working, you know, completely reliably for months on end. So, and and as I said, the, when you buy used equipment, you you no idea it could have been running like tens of thousands of hours in a very crappy data center where where it also didn't have thermal thermals under control. So, but um, anyway, um, plugged in the cord. Um, booted into Windows 11. Drivers were active, of course, no network connectivity through that. I plugged in the um, SFP module. <coughs> you don't get any reaction from the driver, and it's actually this. It's actually rather hard to see if you have a module plugged in there. There are some possibility of getting a hold of utilities that would tell you that, the, uh, that there's an SFP module present. But the, the, the main uh, wake up is that when you plug in the fiber, and then it, um, it uh, detects the, um, the link, then, then the card wakes up. And then, yeah, and then you get the IP address. Then it's just transparent. You get the IP address and everything works as, as intended. But, cool, 10 gigabit back. And um, <laughs> it's like, they are dirt cheap. I was like, Thirty dollars each, you know, it's like nothing <laughs> for a for a dual adapter. So I could actually put two fibers on it, and you can also you can do all kinds of. I haven't done this because I haven't got enough bandwidth on my never. But if you had like a hundred gig um, backbone, you could actually pair them up, and you could get like you know, insane speeds. But I mean, this is good enough for me. I've um, I can recommend it. 10 gig I can recommend because when you're doing uh, video editing against the server um, with those servers that I have, if you've been following my videos, the servers that I have and then I run um, uh, video editing against the, like raw against the server, uh, it's just uh, it's absolutely fantastic. They're, I mean, it's it's really good enough for me as a hobbyist YouTuber. I can very much uh, be like super happy with that performance. Um, you don't really get that against the standard NAS running. Like I have a hundred megabit network, but even, even, but then my NAS equipment, the other, yeah, NAS equipment, not, not dedicated storage servers like I have, have um, that I've had. Yeah, the three six, three eighties. Um, ah, you you get weird lags and stuff with it because they're not server; they're not enterprise servers. So, so even if I, even if I have old enterprise servers like HP P8 stuff, uh, it, it, it still makes a huge difference that it's enterprise gear because it, in the, in the day it was meant that the one server should serve thousands of office workers and all database servers and all kinds of stuff. So the you know, the whole engineering of the system. <laughs> a cheap NAS can't come anywhere close to that engineering. But anyway, ah, enough for babbling. Um, great, it works. I've introduced to the community how you update the firmware, and as I said, that I'm 100% sure that that works. And, and that was not the issue why the card didn't start. There's something else wrong with it. And, um, yeah, cool. See you in the next one.